All right, guys, so this is day two of NAB. Devin and I have gone through a day slogging through booths, seeing all there is to see, and I've actually got a cheat sheet here so <laughs> we don't miss the stuff we liked and what we didn't like. First, I kind of want to talk about the Indie Pro Power Audio Solutions. This is a really interesting concept. It allows you to combine multiple LPE6 batteries into a pack that can provide up to, I think, was it 70 watts? Uh, yeah, well, they're saying about four batteries together will be yeah, about 70, yeah. Four batteries together, so four LPE6 batteries on a single mount gives you either a 12-volt source or a 7.2-volt source of the voltage regulator and an option for audio adapting. Now, Devin informed me that this has been on the market for a while, and I've completely <laughs> missed it. So that thing is pretty sweet, and I'm pretty excited about that. Well, and it's not just limited to that. There's also Sony MP that they do. They'll also uh, adapt to your gold or V-mount batteries into the DSLR workflow. So actually, it's a, lots of different power options for mixing and matching power sources with cameras. Yeah, it seemed like a really good option. Now, you had a camera monitor that was really cute, a really tiny little guy. It's called the E2 Work. Well, uh, that's that's the company name is E2 Work. Okay. The monitor name I couldn't even I tell you. I think it was you. just named like Mini SD Monitor yeah. version 1 or something like that. Uh, but I appreciated uh, the size of it. It had a bright screen. It looked like IPS. Wasn't sure on that. But I also appreciate the fact that it had audio meters right on the top there. Uh, and I, I saw it also being used as a rack mountable source too for putting like five or six monitors into a 2U rack mount, uh, which is useful for a lot of different broadcast applications. Now, didn't they have an SDI to HDMI converter too that they, was like really affordable? It, well, it was 300 50, which off the bat doesn't sound affordable, but considering the size is like a stick of gum and the fact that it has a scaler, when you compare this to Blackmagic where they've got a big box that gets pretty hot and it won't do any scaling, it's just a flat conversion between HDMI or SDI, vice versa. Yeah. Uh, the one you buy will only go one way, so either you buy it to the SDI or to the HDMI, but it didn't get hot at all and it had a built-in scaler, which it looked like it could also change between interlace and non-interlace. So there was a lot of options there where normally you only get those features if you spend $500 on um, you know, different video conversions. So. Yeah, now how was it powered? Was it USB? It, yeah, it was a micro USB plug, so I imagine it's running an amp or two amps through that. Yeah, so that little mini monitor we're talking about, that has its own internal battery and it's charged via USB. They said, I think, two hours runtime on yeah. that. So that's a pretty decent deal. The next thing up on the list is actually the tiny Panasonic booth. Now we were all Well, for hoping, the Lumex cameras, that part yes, was tiny. The, rest the booth, of the booth was, was big. Really big. But they were focusing mostly on their bigger camera lines, you know, the Vericam their and Pro so on. Sumer, as well as their camcorders and things like that. Yeah, that's mostly what they're showing off. The GH4 section was like about <laughs> this big. It's really tiny. It's kind of disappointing. We were all expecting to see a GH5 this year, and we probably will see it towards the end of the year, but we're not seeing it here at NAB. Yeah. Uh, Devin, do you think they're kind of holding off and focusing on their higher end camera lineup before they introduce a GH5? Uh, I think, yeah, there's, they're bringing a lot of uh, t technology. I think they, they may be kind of like scared by JVC, who has been like, even though they haven't gotten a lot of attention, I think they've been producing some really interesting products that have some really solid image quality and some interesting features as well as JVC pushes for the college sports market and yeah. everything else with their feature set. And I think Panasonic is trying to make sure that they don't lose ground in that area. So they're focusing on their camcorders. Now, Besides that disappointment, there was a lot of good stuff we saw. I want to talk about the Triad Orbit. This is an interlock system that allows you to basically bolt in with a like slide collar type lock, uh, microphones, stands, mounts, anything you can think of. And it's $19 for the receiver, and I think it was like 10 or 15 bucks for the adapter it, portion that goes in there. So it was pretty affordable, especially considering it was strong. Yeah. Like, like fully, some kind of aluminum, it super tough. It uses a hexagonal shape so you can turn your mic and slam it in in any direction you want. Really good for boom poles. Uh, excellent, it's supposed to be hitting the market with the individual components in about two months. And right now you can buy it as a kit for 130 or 140 bucks. Lots of different kits. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different accessories. Really interesting product. I really like the idea that I can just slap a monitor or slap a light source or hook a mic into my boom pole without having to worry about sort of screwing things in, and things and so on. And we actually were at the Lilliput booth trying to yeah. do some stuff with their monitors, mm -hmm. and we had to fiddle around with unscrewing stuff and screwing stuff back in, where it would have been really nice if we had one of those. And it just popped and popped. Yep. yep, really cool product. Next on the list, wow, do you want to talk about drones? Because they have an entire there drone really was pavilion. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, nothing really new. I mean, of course, there was a few big drones, and there was a few that were advertising drones that can carry up to 65 pounds. Uh, with uh, multi-motor failure modes and parachute systems that can carry reds and control the reds in the air and everything else. Um, most of these are the kind of systems that you know are built for boutiques that actually yeah. do that every single day. Uh, in terms of the consumer market, the stuff we're interested in, besides the Phantom 4, which has been out for a while, we've all seen it, yeah. and the R3D, 
it's just the same stuff we've seen from last year. So there really hasn't been any new innovations from DVI, DGI this year. I think they're focusing on their Osmos and yeah. that kind of stuff. I was kind of expecting to see more VR, but we've only seen like, what, three or four VR booths? Yeah, it seemed like the software people were really interested in VR, and a few of the booths were just kind of showing off, hey, you can stack together GoPros or Blackmagic cameras for VR. But once again, like we, went all over the floor and there was only a couple of booths with actual VR headsets. Now, while we're talking about GoPro, let's talk about some GoPro accessories. We've got those really cute Luma Cube lights. Yeah. And they're these little tiny lights that have about an hour worth of battery power and maybe 40 minutes, depending on the brightness you set them at. They're capable of putting out about, what, 1,500 nits? 1,500, yeah. And they're about the size of a well, maybe three or four dice stacked together. Really mm -hmm. tiny. You can buy a kit of them for, uh, I think four pack is like two ninety nine. dollars Yeah. Or about they're about 300. 100 bucks a piece. And they're really tiny. You can grab a handful of these. The light output is so strong. And they're 85 CRI. So that's yeah. pretty decent. And you for can their carry size, these yeah. for their size. You can have an entire little mini lighting kit in a bag that takes up very little space. And they're waterproof. Uh, they actually were demonstrating them underwater. Yeah. And you unscrew the back and they have a USB port that allows you to charge them or extend the power of their battery life as well exactly a very slick design well and as well because of that small size it, it kind of is like the GoPro of lighting because it gives you so many mounting options that you maybe wouldn't consider before they're light enough you could just take some gaff tape and stick it to a wall if you have to so absolutely and one other tiny light that I really liked was I think it was called the Aladdin you remember yes, that? Yes. It's a really thin panel. It has about an hour of battery life built in. Again, USB powered, but it's a bigger panel, about the size of a GH4 body as far as the width and height goes, and probably as thick as a cell phone. But it puts out a lot of light. Uh, two or three of these can be used in conjunction to, to do really decent lighting setup. And with a battery pack attached to it via the USB port, you can run pretty much all day. We saw a couple of these being used, talk to people that were using them, and they look really sweet. Little spendy. I think they yeah. were like 500 bucks a pop. They, and by little spendy, I mean a lot spendy compared to the 299 option. Right, and you are you are getting a really high. I think they're advertising over 95 CRI. Yes, yes. Uh, so they're all about the light quality, and a lot of them are color changeable in terms yeah. of their LED output. Uh, but it's one of those two that if you really consider low light cameras like an A7S, uh, these kits, even though they may not produce the most light with gigantic bulky, bulky batteries, you can set up a three point lighting system with something that fits inside your pocket. It's absolutely crazy. I love the idea of being able to just grab like three or four really tiny lights, throw them in my bag, have a power source for them and not have to worry about any other solutions for going out in the field. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's perfect for everything, but for like basically show up and shoot something really quick and get out of there, it's a really interesting approach. Next thing on the list, and this is actually sort of making GoPros a little bit more useful is the time code feature that they were showing off. I don't even remember what the booth was, honestly. Do you? Uh, the name of them? Uh, go something sync, go sync. But uh, go, well, yeah, there's, we'll put if, a link if you, in the show notes. Yeah, and if you search for, and you'll maybe see in some of the footage, uh, it's a backpack you put on the GoPro that uh, jams in a sync code. And what's nice is that you can use that one backpack to jam sync code into several GoPros. So then when you get into editing, everything lines up. There's no syncing, there's no issues. All your time code's gonna be synced up. The system goes even further because it's actually wireless time code that can extend to multiple cameras and it'll interface with a lot of different cameras ah. too, whether it's a C300 or something bigger and you're trying to get it all together. But in terms of low cost usability, uh, how much was it for I the GoPro I think it was 249 backpack? for the GoPro backpack. Yeah, GoPro so backpack, but only one, and you can do jam syncing by plugging it into each camera after you turn it on, and then they'll all be in sync. Yeah, and they had so. a really cool demo where they had uh, maybe eight or ten GoPros just go out from a room and come back into the room, and they were showing that off, and with the time code, made editing really, really simple. Uh, last thing on my list here is actually the Liquid Image 4G action camera. Now, mm -hmm. we've kind of talked about it in the past. GoPro has been seeing some hard times. They're down, they cut their yes. staff by like 20% or something like that, yeah. and the booth is sort of reflecting that. It wasn't a very exciting booth this year. Uh, they were just kind of maintaining status Their branding. quo. And yeah. yeah. And there's a few companies in the South Hall that had some really interesting uh, sort of action cam options, but the, the, the key there was that they actually had a 4G wireless pack that was capable of transmitting live streams uh, to YouTube to anywhere else. 
uh, via yeah. the device itself. Well, uh, and the, the Verizon network, uh, if you can imagine a GoPro-sized camera with a small 4G modem that you can absolutely. either attach directly or even use a wire if you say you want it to be a body camera yeah. and use a wire to go up to 4G. They're, they obviously are looking for applications. They talked about sometimes security and monitoring and things like that as well. But The key there was the price, though. It was like $399 for the starter mm -hmm. and $499 for the advanced model. And, 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 and while it's not 4K, because you're not going to broadcast oh, yeah, 4K no. over 4G, it is what looks like a solid 1080p camera, just like GoPro, for basically GoPro yeah. pricing, and there's a 4G modem included, and of course you're going to be paying monthlies on that, but still, for that kind of buy-in price, it's super cheap for a good well, camera. Well, imagine if you wanted to cover an event, though, and you could pepper these throughout the oh, event yeah. and live stream, and people could see, like, hey, what's going on behind the scenes? So they can see behind the stage, maybe, or they yeah. could see, like, you know, actors getting ready for something, or, you know, any kind of application. The lady there was even mentioning as a security function, or as, like, a meeting function, so if you have a set that you're leaving and going to do something else and you, you're having lunch or whatever and you want to know when they're ready, you can kind of keep an eye on that via your phone and see, oh, okay, these guys have like started to gather back in and I need to get back over there to get back to work again. Yeah. So there's a lot of weird, interesting applications for that. Mm -hmm. Devin, you have anything else you want to add before we get out of here? No, absolutely not. I've been having a blast. <laughs> you can tell that our enthusiasm has sort of worn down a little bit over the last <laughs> day or two of NAB. But it's been fun. We're going to continue to wander around for one more day on Wednesday, and we'll report back tomorrow with what we find and what we like. Thanks, guys, for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow on the next show.